What's up guys? Welcome back to the mountaintop. I'm Cody and today I'm going to be showing you how to sight in a gun without a bore sighter. I'm going to be shooting this Savage Model 110 Precision. It's chambered in a 6.5 Creedmoor. I just picked this up. I have not shot it at all. It's brand new out of the box and I'm going to be sighting it in with no bore sighter so that you know people who have just bought guns, new to buying guns, don't have a bore sighter. Uh, this will show you how to get it done without it. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, hey, man, I know how to sight in a gun. I've got a bore sight or whatever. But there's been a lot of first-time gun buyers here in the last year and a half. You know, if you are a first-timer and you don't know what a bore sighter is, this is a caliber-specific one. This one's made for a 3030. This is a Marlin 336W chambered in 3030. I use it every year, so I invested in this cider. It's, it's, it's quicker, it's easier, and it's caliber specific, so it's going to be true every time. Um, you know, you get the universal ones, and they just go in the end of your barrel here, and they can wiggle around, and you're not going to get the same thing every time. Um, but with this one, it fits perfectly inside of here. It's a 30-30 shell. So wh what you do is, when you get these, um, it comes with the batteries, everything, in this little tool, and you just use this and you twist it until your laser comes on and then you will open your chamber slide this guy down in there close your chamber it fits just like a bullet and then now you can see it's coming out of the end of the barrel there and what you'll do is you'll wait until it's later on in the evening before you know closer to sundown and you'll go out and you'll shine it on a tree maybe 50 yards away, zero your scope into that, and then it'll give you, you'll be pretty close when you start shooting for paper. These are a lot more expensive than your universal one because you're buying one for every single caliber. So you can do a universal one if you want to save some time or you don't need to buy one at all. We'll show you how to do it today, how to sight it in, get it zeroed in without anything at all other than the bullet and the gun. So. All right, so after you pick out your scope, you get it mounted, you're ready to go out, you get your ammo, you're ready to go sight this gun in. Biggest thing is, is when you're traveling to the range, you don't want your gun to be loaded. When I traveled here, the mag's separate from the gun, the bullets are separate from the gun. You treat every gun as if it's loaded at all times. Especially when you're walking down range in front of these guns, you don't want there to be a bullet in the chamber. You don't even want there to be one in the magazine because you just don't know. You know, there's been crazier things happen. But, um, Travel to the range with it empty, keep it empty. When you're going to go set up your target, keep it empty. Don't load it until you're ready to shoot it and only use one bullet at a time. It just makes the most sense. But we'll walk down here, we'll show you how to set up your target. You see, we've got a normal target and then we've also got this pizza box here. We're at 25 yards, so you always wanna start at 25 yards. And this will, you know, if, if we can't hit this pizza box at 25 yards, there's a problem. Usually any scope out of the box you put it on, you should be able to hit at least this. And you want to start at 25. If you start at 100 yards, it's hard to tell where you're going to be. You want to start close and then work your way back out. But this is a good setup. This is probably what you're going to want to start with. Small target with something big behind it. Because chances are I'm not going to hit this target the first shot. We'll probably hit somewhere in here or somewhere in here. And it's good to have. So we'll go back, we'll get set up, and we'll start putting some lead down range. All right, now we're back here. We're about to load this gun up, and we're about to shoot our first shot. So you can see this, this clip's empty. We're only going to use one bullet at a time. All right, gun's empty, we'll walk down range. See, that's why it's always good to only use one shell because the gun's empty, we eject that shell, catch it, keep it, and then we're ready to run down range. You don't have to worry about unloading your gun or making sure that you don't walk in front of it. And so now we'll check this out. And surprisingly enough, we actually hit the paper. And so now what you'll do is you'll measure this. So we'll go, two and a half, three inches down. All right, now that you've gotten back, you figured out how far down or up and how far left and right you need to go, you come back and you pull these caps off here. 
and so we needed to come down two and a half inches and if you look at this one click is a quarter inch at 100 yards and it'll tell you which directions up which directions down um, and so we need to come down 10 clicks so all right that's 10 and so these one click is a quarter inch that's at 100 yards now this probably isn't going to be I just moved it two and a half inches at 100 yards it'll probably only be maybe an inch and a half at 25 yards but we can always adjust more as we go your left and right's here it's always this is always your left and right and this is always your up and down and so nine times out of ten a scope's going to be four clicks at 100 yards is an inch so We'll go ahead, we've made these adjustments. Now we'll throw these um, scope mounts off to the side because we're gonna need to make more adjustments. We'll just throw these off to the side, keep track of them, and we'll put another round in it and we'll see what those adjustments did for us. We'll put another bullet down range. We'll come over here, we'll look at our target and you can see i lowered it two and a half inches and it maybe dropped one so we'll go back and we'll say so two and a half inches only dropped it an inch so we'll maybe drop it four inches now and see where it puts us so we came down 10 clicks it only brought us down about an inch we need to come an inch and a half farther so we'll go down four inches which is 16 clicks All right, and we'll throw another shell in and we'll try that and see how it goes. And you can see we're pretty darn close to that red dot now. So what we'll do is we will take these stickers here and we will cover these up and then now we're to the point where it's close enough we can move back to 50 yards and see how we do so we'll go ahead we'll move everything back and then we'll set up we've moved back to 50 yards we were hitting really close to the center of that bullseye um, and another important thing that we didn't really touch base on earlier was this is kind of like this is our own private shooting area here and we're we're positive that that bullet is going to hit you know dirt it's going to hit a bank it's not going to travel any farther that is another really big thing you need to worry about when you're sighting in your weapon is making sure that that bullet isn't going to go through your target and keep going you need to make sure that it's going to hit a mountain or a dirt pile something that's going to stop that bullet we'll go ahead we'll throw another one in it and we'll see how much closer we can get to the bullseye And that one was way high so that's the thing once you get if you're close at 25 yards you know at 50 it's probably going to be higher because your bullet it makes you know an arc kind of and falls down into your target at 100 yards 200 yards so your bullet you're going to notice it trending up to before 100 we made our adjustments now we're going to try it again we were shooting probably about three and a half inches high and a little to the left All right, now we'll go down there and we'll check and see what we did. We're to the point at 50 yards where we can move out to 100 and we should be hitting paper. So at 100 yards, this is when you're gonna start wanting to look at your ammo box. Because here on the box, it's gonna tell you, you know, at 100 yards, I'm gonna be wanting my gun to shoot 1.9 inches high. And at 200 yards, it's gonna fall perfectly to level. So we're sighting in for 100, I'm gonna want it to be shooting right at two inches high. Um, we'll throw a shell in it, we'll see where it's shooting. All right, we'll walk down there and we'll see what it's doing. 
so now that we're here i just covered up a hole that was right here that was the 50 yard shot and this is a 50 yard shot this is our 100 yard one and if you measure it's shooting right at about two inches high like it said on the box for all i know i perfectly flinched you know and it put that bullet right there so what i'm gonna want to do is i'm gonna at least want to shoot it one more time just to see if it groups close to this and if it does then it should be pretty consistent and accurate but you never want to take that first dead on shot and be like i'm done all right we're back now we look and like this box said we were shooting right at about 1.9 inches high we were pretty good left to right um so we're going to put one more shell down range and we're going to see what our grouping is if we can group within a half inch to an inch of that this gun right here this is a 6.5 creedmoor um it's a savage model 110 precision so this gun should be it should easily shoot a half inch group um if your gun's dirtier it could shoot you know a two inch group or something like that you know so if you're getting close to where that was then you should be good to go all right let's go see what we did here are the two holes. These are the 100 yard holes right here, and they're pretty much touching. If you can get your gun to shoot a group where the holes are pretty much touching, you're good to go. It helps if your gun's clean. That gun's brand new, and it was designed to shoot these tight groupings. But if you can get your gun to shoot something like this, you're pretty well sighted in. All right, so we got this thing zeroed in at 100 yards. It's on paper, it's consistent. So we know it's going to do the same thing when we pull it out next time. And when you do pack your gun up to take it home, make sure that it is empty. There's nothing in the chamber. There's nothing in the magazine. Um, and I know that this video may not have been the best for everybody. I know a lot of people know how to sight in guns and it seemed kind of counterproductive. But there are a lot of first-time gun buyers that I hope that this will help. And, um, you know, we're going to start posting videos on this channel, hopefully every Monday and Friday. That's the plan. So if you are new around here, please leave a like, subscribe push the notifications, and we'll see you next time.